<clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of a God Shift podcast. I am your host, Shana Rattler, and I am the founder of a God Shift movement. I am so happy that you are here. I am excited to get into this conversation with my sister on the West Coast. So I want to, um, as I welcome you in, I want to ask you to do me a favor. So wherever it is that you are consuming this podcast, I would love for you to take a screenshot. So whether that is on your phone, your tablet, your computer, wherever it is, take a screenshot and post that screenshot on your social media. When you do, number one, tag us here at A God Shift. And then if you will tell me what your biggest takeaway or your biggest aha moment is. Why do I do that? I don't care the least bit about number of downloads. I honestly could not even tell you how many downloads I've had since I started this podcast, but I do care about the number of hands that this information gets in because I want people to be able to overcome adversity. I want people to be able to grow their faith. And ultimately, I want to do my part to build the kingdom. So would you help me with that? Would you please share, share, share this episode? So I am going to read my guest bio and we are going to get into what I already know is going to be a very powerful conversation. Tamika Thomas is a certified inner healing coach. She believes God has called her to be the bridge over troubled waters, assisting women to transition. Her belief is God wants all women to heal, elevate, and become restored. Tamika has spoken at several universities, women's empowerment event organizations, schools, and churches. She is dedicated to showing others how they can turn their trials into treasures so they can move forward. She is the founder and CEO of Tuesday Healing with Tamika podcast, Becoming Fearlessly Her University, and the restored community, all which focuses on showing others how to live a life to inspire and not impress. Through her products and services, she partners with her clients and readers, navigating them through life challenges so they can become fearlessly her. Tamika is a six-time author, mentor to many, but her most notable accomplishment is being a wife to her husband and a mother to her eight children. My God in heaven, welcome to the show, Tamika. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I truly count it an honor and a privilege sharing this stage with you. You know, we did a little pre-talk and I just feel like God is about to come and really show out before I was, as I was preparing for the podcast, I kept hearing impact impact in my spirit yeah. and I truly believe that God is going to allow us to impact some folks with this conversation awesome so let's get to it because I'm all about impact I say you know most of us that are in this realm don't do what we do for income we do it so that we can have impact and influence I don't get paid a dime for doing this this is my third interview in three hours and I don't get paid a dime directly for doing this but I do it because I want my influence to have an impact so I'm so yeah. glad that that's kind of what the Lord showed you. So Tamika, I want to set the stage for this conversation because my ministry is a God shift. This podcast is a God shift. Everything that I do is a God shift. And so my definition of that is anytime we unlock our kingdom authority, collide mm -hmm. with God's purpose, but move into a greater destiny. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I always like to start these interviews off is by asking my guests, what is your personal definition of kingdom authority? Mm, kingdom authority is really living out the scriptures. When uh, the scripture in the Bible, it talks about whatsoever things we shall bind on heaven shall be bound on earth. Whatsoever things we shall loose on heaven shall be loosed on earth. Really walking in that authority and knowing that God wants us to have kingdom here on earth you know so many believers are waiting for that you know great day in glory where we'll be raptured up and i too cry maranatha but i also understand that i can have kingdom here and i have to walk in authority to truly have that i love that you know every single person that i ask their answers are always completely different yet so profound or say, or yet so impactful to use the word that the Lord gave you. So I love that you say that because the scripture says what we bind in heaven shall be loosed on earth and what, what is loosed in heaven shall be loosed on earth. So basically what I hear you saying is, is that everything that happens in earth, 
or, or in heaven happens in earth, but it's on us to do it. It's on yeah. us to do the binding and it's on us to do the loosing. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. And I always tell the women that I'm blessed to speak to or to coach that it has already happened. Like, so it, there's always something that happens in the supernatural before it hits the natural. So it's just a matter of us like believing in it, believing it. We have to partner with it. We have to know that that sickness is already healed despite yes. the doctor's report. We have to know that we already can live like kings and queens despite what the bank account says. So it's having that um, mindset shift to yeah. truly unlock those things that are already done in heaven. Already done, right? So, you know, I told someone I was being interviewed on their podcast prior to my interview with you. And I told him, I said, if we think about what it says in the scripture, the first part of the scripture is what we quote. What we quote. And it says, greater things than these shall you do in my name. And we mo most of us know that. But what comes after the comma is because I'm going to the father. Yes. And so I said on this interview, God has done all he's going to do. Jesus has done all he's going to do. Now the authority has been passed to us. The Holy Spirit is the only thing that is left here on earth. And it's inside of us so that we can act. Mm. So that mm. we can act. God is not going to do anything more than he's already done. Jesus is not going to do anything more than he's already done. Why? Because they pass the authority on to us. Now, they still have the power, but we have the authority to make those things happen in our lives, to make those things happen in other people's lives. So when I talk to people and they haven't overcome adversity, they haven't grown their faith, they haven't walked into their destiny. I say, you know why? And it's exactly what you said, Tamika, because they have not partnered with what it is that God has already done in heaven to see it here on earth. A absolutely. You know, I heard something the other day that really ministered to my spirit and he talked about underdeveloped believers. And I believe that that's why a lot of people are not where they're supposed to be, or they don't even know how to unlock their authority. My son, my youngest son is 10 years old. And about two years ago, he took my car keys and he went out to the car and, you know, my car keys has the house key, has some other keys on there. And he was getting ready to put the house key in the car door. And I'm like, boy, what are you doing? You're about to get my key stuck. And he said, well, I thought all keys open all doors. Wow. And it like literally hit me. That's how a lot of people are living their lives. They believe the keys that they had in their hurt season will open doors in their healed season. They believe keys that God gave them when they were new believers will work while, they, while he's uh, developing them. It does not work. You cannot use the same keys. God has already given us the keys. The Bible says, they're ours. However, are you using the correct keys to use that authority to have it here on earth, to do the things? The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than yeah. he that's in the earth, right? So if we truly believe that, you know, it never, even when I was a little girl, I would always be like, do people, do they believe it? Like, do you really believe this stuff that you're reading? Because if so, you would not stay in that underdeveloped state. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what else. It's not enough to believe that God is able because most of us that believe in God recognize that he's able. But the question is, do you think he's willing? And is mm. he willing to do it for you? Because mm. we walk around and we quote the scripture that God is no respecter of persons. But out of that same mouth, we will say, well, of course, Shana can do that. She's got a television show. She's got a podcast. She's a published author. Of course, Tamika can do that. She's got this. She's done that. She's spoken here. No, 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 no. Do you not just believe that God is able, but do you believe yeah. that he's not only able to do his job, but, but he will do it for you? The, the word of God said he's faithful and just, right? So he's faithful and just. If you truly believe that, uh, 2020, God woke me up and he, he tends to do this. I'm always like, God, you don't want to talk at any other time except for two o'clock. <laughs> we don't have good operating hours. Let me just tell you, if y'all just now getting ready to follow God, let me bust your bubble. He ain't got no good operating hours. <laughs> Oh, God be like my office I was off from whenever I say, right? Yeah. So he waked me, he woke me up and I heard, I honor movement. So many people, they're sitting, they're wait, waiting, they're praying and they're fasting. And listen, all those things are steps. However, 
when does the movement take place? When do we start putting one foot in front of the other? I tell people, and I heard this years ago, the tongue in our mouth and the tongue in our shoes need to start going in the same direction. They got to move in the same direction. Let me, let me be carnal for a minute. There's been some brothers that I've dated and, you know, they be flying stuff, right? And I say, so let me get this straight. You flying all, but the tongue in your shoe and the tongue in your life can't go in the mouth, can't go in the same direction. I, I don't understand. Then that we can't go nowhere, brother. We can't go together. <laughs> you go because you go in two different ways. So, Tamika, let's get personal for a minute. So, your definition of kingdom authority is binding and loosing. Just like it's bound and loose in heaven, you have to do that on earth. And we've established by this point that we actually, as believers, have the authority to bind and loose things in our own lives. So, can you think of a time in your own life? that you have had to release your kingdom authority to get to where you are today. Listen, there are so many times that God has given me the opportunity to use my kingdom authority. But one that really steps out, stands out to me was about 10 years ago. I was a young 32 year old PYT. Okay. PYT. <laughs> and I woke up in the middle of the night. I was in a marriage that was not a God ordained, but that was Tamika ordained. And I was stressed out. I was broke. I was broken. I was all the things. Woke up six o'clock to wake my children up. Me and him didn't have any children together. I woke my children up and I fell into the closet door. I heard my sons run in. I saw my daughter's face and I'm like, what's going on? My mind was active, but my body was not. At that very moment, I understood what the ladies, the old mothers of the church would say. I want to thank God for the activities of my limbs because I had a massive stroke at 32 years old. Wow. And as I was transported to the hospital, unable to talk, completely paralyzed on one side, my mind active, but nothing coming out. I had to use my kingdom authority and I had to literally command my body to move. I had to command my body to be healed. Thank God for the activity of my mind because I knew scriptures. The word of God says, hide the scriptures in your heart that you will not sin against it. That, that literally was my saving grace because I was talking to my body and I was saying, by his stripes, you are healed. As they, they literally had to strap me up to the bed because I was getting up before physical therapy, unable, because I was like, I, this can't be. This cannot be the way that I leave out here. This cannot be the way that I my, my life ends. And from that moment on, so there was two weeks in the hospital that I was in the hospital in that state. Slowly but surely, the first thing that God said is, if you stop trying to be God to everybody, right? You, you won't have these, these moments where you feel like you can't get up. Right. Oh, everything that happened in that moment was prophetic. Everything that happened in that period of time. So when I released all of that, God gave me back the keys and he gave me back my authority. And I began to walk boldly, not to mention I was doing a whole lot of stuff out of order. I don't believe in the God that's in, in the sky waiting for us to do something bad and cast a bullet down. I don't, I don't believe in that God, but I do understand that many are called and few are chosen. And when you are not walking on the road that he has designed for you, he will stop you anyway. He got to. I agree wholeheartedly. <clears throat> I, I often say that the Lord is so committed to his results that he will do whatever he has to do to disrupt your life and get your attention so that he can get you back on the path that he has planned for you. And he does, and he's not attached to what it is. He's not attached to how severe it has to be, but he is attached to his results in the earth. And That's so, so good. he decided that he's going to use you in a certain way or if he's decided that something that you're putting energy into is not the path that he has planned for you, he's going to do whatever he has to do to shake you up, to get your attention and get you on that right path. Yes, he will. Yeah. And I am just, I'm grateful for his grace. You know, so many people talk about the grace of God, but I think that they forget in Titus, I believe it's two and one. And it says, God's grace is a teacher, right? So it, it teaches us. And, and that moment was like an ultimate teacher for me 
to not put my trust and my confidence in no man, but to truly lean on God from which my strength and health come from. And so that was literally that God shift. I was raised in the church. You know, there were many things that happened in my life that should not happen to little girls. At eight years old, I was removed from my mother's home and I was raised with my father and they were, you know, my grandfather was a preacher, my daddy was a preacher. So from eight on, I was, you know, was considered a pew baby. And I knew God very intimately at a young age, but I did not, I, I, ooh, one of my guests on my podcast talked about an ungodly soul tied to the church. Yes, I got it. Listen, I had a I had a, a soul tied to the church, and but my soul wasn't tied to the to the God that wants us to be in church and wants us to have a relationship with him. So although I was in church, like many folks, I didn't have no relationship. And I, you know, I would I would waver back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I knew the word, I understood the word. God has always used me in a mighty way, but I was not committed. Yeah. After that moment of literally being put on my back, I committed my life to God. That was 10 years ago. And I have not looked back. I can't tell you that I've been perfect because listen, in this flesh dwells no good thing, yeah. but I have truly dedicated my life to helping other people heal because I understand the power of healing. That's so good. And healing means so many things you know, you're a certified inner healing coach. And so healing means more than just our physical body because it's great if our physical body is moving and grooving, but if our inner man is broken, broken, we're never going to get to where it is that God has us, has us, has us to be, let alone use us in the capacity in which he wants to use us. Yeah, and I think so many people neglect they neglect the inner man. You know, there's four domains in our life. There's the physical, the spiritual, the mental, and the financial. Yes. We don't got all of them all together, right? And that's what God, God wants us to have holistic healing. And when you heal from the inside out, there's so much, like everything else will work. It's really contagious. It's really contagious when you dedicate your life to taking care of that inner man and having like, practices, you know, some not rituals, but practices and habits that you do every day to exercise that inner man, man, yeah. because the sky's the limit beyond that is the limit. So I want to pause and take a quick break. <clears throat> One, before I lose my voice. And two, I want us to talk a little bit about how we can put some of those practices into place. This episode is brought to you by the free guide when God says shift inside you'll discover the four shifts required to follow God's plan to move you into a greater destiny, expectancy, and possibility. Head to GodSaysShift.com. That's GodSaysShift.com to access it now. The devil is a liar. His voice is not going anywhere. Mm -mm. I got too much to say, y'all. <laughs> but anyway, Tamika, I want to I want to shift the conversation a little bit because I love stories and I love theory, but there's one thing that I love more than that. And that is the information that gives us transformation. So mm -hmm. I want us to share some tips. So if someone is listening to this episode and they're like, all of this sounds great. Like I want to exercise my kingdom authority. I want to heal my inner man because I want to have more and be more and do more like these two young ladies that are on the screen. We ain't that young, but we young enough don't go. Because <laughs> you know, when she said 10 years ago when she was 42, I'm like, ooh, I'm older than that. So if there's somebody who is listening to this episode and they're like, listen, I'm struggling to exercise my kingdom authority and heal my inner man so that I can shift to a better place in my life. What is the best tip or practice that you could give them so that they can pull all of this together? You know, you could, there, there's so many things that people will tell you about journaling and, and doing all this mindfulness and all this stuff. But I feel like the number one tip is acknowledging it. The number one thing that you could do to really do be and have everything that you want is to acknowledge it. So many Christians, <laughs> We talk this Christianese and when folks ask you how you doing, I'm I'm great. I'm uh, blessed and highly favored. And we know we're supposed to call things that are not, a, we, we get all that. 
But God cannot do anything in us because we have not acknowledged it. We love, and, and I got to go here, especially Black folks. We love to sweep stuff under the rug. We love to act like it ain't there. And God's like, okay, I can't heal what you're hiding. I can't do it. So the number one thing is really acknowledging it. And what that means and what that looks like, grab you a piece of paper, grab you a, no a notebook, go to the 99 cent store, grab you a journal and write down all the offenses, all the things. Once you do that, then you're able to, what I like to say is put some ointment on it through <laughs> the word of God, right? So you could say, yes, I was molested. And that's why I have a hard time with romantic relationships of the opposite sex. Yes, I was abandoned by my parents and I feel, you know, I'm always pushing people away. And so I, even though I know God has called me to be in a marriage, I, I got abandonment. I got, there's some holes in my soul. Yeah. But until you do that and not say things like we, we so often like to edit things, right? Before we even got, give God the grace and the, the, the ability to heal it, we'll say like, well, my parents did the best that they could with that, what they had. That's true, but it still hurt you. It still caused some damage. It still messed you up in some ways. So let's acknowledge it. Let's yeah. put it all on the, on, on the table. So then God can clean up the mess. But as long as you were trying to still hold on to it and hide it, you're not giving him the authority to do anything with it. And then you yeah. can't have the authority to walk in freedom, which is really what salvation is. And even to draw a natural parallel, when we think about the 12 step program for people who are addicted to alcohol and or drugs, the very first step is to recognize that you have a problem. Yes. Yes. You said you can't heal what is hidden. So if we're not willing to first be honest with ourselves as to what truly healed us and then be honest with somebody else that we need to be healed. How will we ever get past it? Yeah. Yeah. You won't. You won't. And then we have a whole bunch of grown folks walking around like 12 year olds, like 18 year olds, because they're stuck in that place where that offense happened because yeah. they never acknowledged it. They never, you know, talked about it. They never got through it. You know, yes, God, we, you know, we need to pray to him. We need to talk to him, but he's also given us some folks here on earth that yeah. can help us unpack this stuff. Yeah, that's so true. So Tamika, before we begin to wrap up, are there any final words that you would like to leave with our listeners? Yeah, you know, I love that you talked about the impact that you desire, that God just has given you the desire. One of the things that I always leave my listeners with and with people when I'm blessed to, you know, be on their stages is if we live a life to inspire and not impress, Social media has really done a number on folks, making us feel like we have to be something bigger than what we think that maybe we are, right? And it really messes with our identity. Yes. When we live a life to inspire, when that's our goal, inspire, impact, all the other stuff is going to come to us. We do not have to impress anyone. So what I want to leave is you have nothing to hide you have nothing to prove and you have nothing to protect. When God gives you those keys, you can walk in God-given authority. Yes, that is so, so good. So Tamika, how can our listeners find you and follow you? I have made it extremely simple. Um, Tuesday with Tamika everywhere. So if you go to TuesdayWithTamika.com, you can find my um, website. If you follow me at Tamika Thomas on Facebook, Instagram, I'm just getting um, popping, as my kids would say, on um, uh, what's that? TikTok. So it's Tamika Thomas everywhere. If you find Tamika Thomas or if you type in Tuesday with Tamika, you are bound to found, find me in these online streets. Okay, perfect. And I also will make sure that the links are in the show notes so they don't even have to wonder like, well, how do you spell Tamika? All I got to do is click it and it'll go straight there. Is there awesome. anything that you would like to offer in case somebody wants to take things further with you? Absolutely. So I have 
a seven day gratitude journey journal. I believe that gratitude pays for the damage that trauma caused. So those of you that are dealing with any type of trauma, I have a seven day gratitude journal completely free. And I want to offer that to your community. And then from there, if you would like to build a relationship with me, I would love to be your sister in this healing journey. Perfect. And where do they get the journal? I will actually send you the link and it'll be straight to your show notes, or you can go over to my website, tuesdaywithtamika.com backslash seven day gratitude journal. Perfect. I'll make sure it's there. Tamika, thank you so much for being here today. Everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode of a Godship podcast. Again, share, share, share it. People need to be healed. People need to get the crap out of the way so that they can get to the good stuff that God has for them. So again, share this episode. Thank you for listening today. And I pray that you will listen to future episodes as well. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.